Why is it so important to have everything ready before you heat up your wok? Preparation is the key to success or failure in a Chinese kitchen. In this episode, I'll be sharing with you the secrets that will make your home entertaining experience quicker and much more relaxed. From peeling and dicing veggies to mincing and marinating meats, stuffing and rolling bite-sized parcels, all set to be thrown in the fryer at the last minute. I'll show you the importance of having a sharp knife, a clean chopping board, and making sure we have everything at hand to save you from those kitchen casualties. Kicking it off with a Hong Kong street food favorite, my crispy fried wontons. Followed by minced king prawns smothered in sesame seeds, creating that classic takeaway favorite, sesame seed prawn toast. And then to wrap it up, juicy Chinese vegetables wrapped in a crisp cylindrical package, it can only be spring rolls. If one dish sums up my family's food history, wontons has to be it. Dad's very first job, back when he was a teenager in Hong Kong, was in a wonton restaurant. These little parcels of yumminess can be served in a clear, aromatic broth, resembling little clouds as they float in the soup or deep fried and dipped in your favorite sauce. So the first thing we have to do is prep our ingredients. Um, on the board, I have some water chestnuts, which will need dicing into a really fine dice. Some Chinese mushrooms. I think they're also known as shiitake. Some spring onions. Uh, I've pre-measured out my ingredients as well. One of the things we've got to make sure when we're making wontons is the mixture isn't too wet. So I have some soy sauce, some rice wine, some ginger, black pepper, a little bit of corn flour, which is gonna help bind the mixture together and I'm gonna put in a little squidge of sesame oil. So I've just sharpened my knife actually, but, and I do cheat when I sharpen. I bought one of these little gadgets and it's really important, especially when we're chopping things so finely, is that we have a sharp knife. And literally, I run my knife through the sharpening stones, maybe five, six times. I just carefully clean off the blade and then that can go away. And now, you can see we get a nice clean cut. So I'm gonna make sure my spring onions are tiny. Um, you've got to think, one tons are only so big. Yeah, and um, if we don't do things finely, what happens is you'll get a one ton with maybe a bit of mushroom in and nothing else. Or uh, you get another one with a bit of spring onion in and nothing else. So we can control that by doing everything tiny, incorporating the mixture properly, which I'll show you how to do. And we can then make sure that every mouthful we get all the ingredients in together. So just be careful when you get to the end bits. They're a little bit dry actually, so I'll just grab those and pop these into the bin. There are my spring onions, finely chopped. Now onto my shiitake. And again, I chop these into slices first, and then I'll turn it the other way and we'll just chop these about the same size as the spring onion. So nice and fine. Now these were dried from a packet and um, I reconstituted them in boiling hot water for about 10, 10 minutes or so, um, just so they go nice and soft again. Now traditionally, wontons are made from pork and king prawn and a little bit of pork fat, but because we're making these at home, we can use any ingredients we like. So for you veggies out there, you can make a lovely mixture or cocktail of vegetables. Um, if you like chicken and you're not really keen on king prawn or pork, you can use minced turkey or minced chicken. So the choice really is yours. And the last mushroom. So. It there's my mushroom. And now for the water chestnuts. Again, because the water chestnuts are pre-sliced, you can buy whole ones, which are about, sometimes about that size. So these have just been sliced into three. So I'm just gonna chop these down. Same size again as the mushroom and the spring onion. And I want a fine dice. I'm just speeding up here a little bit now. Again, just tuck your fingers away. And the last one. Okay, so 
my ingredients are prepped. Now you need a large bowl and we're just going to pop in my water chestnuts, my spring onions and my mushrooms. Now in goes my pork. Now this is just minced pork. Like I said, with the Chinese, we normally put a little bit of pork fat through there in King Prawn. This isn't, this is, um, I think, 5% um, fat content in this one. So that's the pork in. We have some ground black pepper, background heat. Black pepper, I find, is a little bit more pungent, and I think you need it in this dish because of all the other ingredients. The corn flour, which is going to help bind the ingredients together. A little tiny splash of rice wine, just to give it that background pungency. A teaspoon of minced ginger. In that goes. Now this is light soy sauce. So just the light type you need for the saltiness. And the last thing, a little tiny squirt of sesame oil. Now sesame oil is used as a seasoning or for marinades. So treat this as a marinade. Because what I've got to do now is get my hands in and really work these ingredients in together. Now, I know you can't smell it at home, but even raw pork with all of these fantastic Chinese ingredients is smelling fantastic. So if it smells nice now, imagine what it's gonna smell like in a few hours when we fry them up. Okay, so there's my pork mixture completely mixed together and we can get on and fold these wontons. So I'm just gonna wash my hand off quickly. Okay, my wonton skins. Now these are bought from the Chinese supermarket. So we take a wonton skin. Now these are, well they're not square, they're a little bit more oblong. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna point one point away from me and one point looking at me. I'll grab my teaspoon and I'm going to take a heat teaspoon and place it straight into the middle of my wonton skin. Now using my egg wash, I'm gonna coat the two sides that are furthest away from me. And all I'm gonna do now with the point that's pointing towards me, I'm gonna bring it up and hold it in my right hand and then swap it to my left hand. And I'm literally using my thumb and forefinger, I'm gonna pinch the mixture, expelling all of that excess air. Now from this position here, I'm gonna take another bit of egg wash. I'm gonna put a little crease in the bum of the one ton, and I'm just gonna hold the, my right side facing upwards. This one, I'm just gonna fold over on the inside. And we get a one ton that's that shape. Now there are different ways of folding these, and this is my preferred way, and these are like little gold ingots. So back in China and Hong Kong years ago, money used to look like that basically, if you were rich. So there's one, and we'll do a couple more, and then I'll carry, I'll do the rest of these off camera. So again, we'll take a one ton skin, we'll take a heaped teaspoon of mixture, a little bit of egg wash, pinch it up towards the top, and just expel all of that air. A little bit of egg on that side. And there's number two. And one more. And the more you do of these, the quicker you will get. For a start, it's quite fiddly, but it's like anything else that you do in life. The more practice, the better you are. And number three. Now I'm gonna to continue to do these, so come back in two minutes and I should have a beautiful plateful of my wontons. There you go guys, my wontons are ready. 
if like me, you're making these in advance, they will stay in the fridge for up to three days, or you could even do a huge batch and pop them in the freezer for up to a month or two even. I'm just gonna wrap these to stop them from drying out. This is the handiness of a chopper again. I can just cut my cling film. And I'll pop these into the fridge and I'll crack on with our prawn toast. So if there's one dish that screams batch cooking, it's sesame seed prawn toast. Back in my mum and dad's restaurant, we'd have an entire production line going on where we'd make up 30 loaves of bread at a time. Thankfully, I'm doing a few slices, enough to keep the crew happy. It all starts with a big bag of shelled, raw, deveined king prawns. So, where do we start? This recipe is not difficult, and everything pretty much goes into one of these. I have some raw king prawns. It doesn't work if you've got pre-cooked prawns, you have to use raw. So, in they go followed by a little pinch of salt. Corn flour to help it bind together. So there's my corn flour. And some egg. And what we do now, we give this a good whiz. Now, I don't want to blend this to a point of where we just, we've got just a smooth paste. I still want a few chunks of king prawns. Okay. Yep, that's fine. Now for the messy part. Go in there. Okay, so you can see that the mixture is quite wet at the moment. Now, this is where it gets a little bit messy. I am going to stand back ever so slightly. Now, we have to beat this mixture for a good five to ten minutes. And what happens is, over time, and the harder we slap, it changes the density of this. So when you eat it, the prawns are springy and it's a, it's a bizarre thing, but it does work and you just have to bear with it as you scrape up the mixture and beat it into the bowl or slap it into the bowl even. And already it's starting to thicken and that's the corn flour and egg doing its thing. And the longer you spend doing this, the better the eating experience. Okay, so a couple more. And I don't know if you can see, that's already thickened up. And it will continue to get thicker, depends on how patient you are. Okay. So let's just not waste any of this. Just give my hands a quick rinse off. Now for the spreading of the bread. And like I said, we used to do about 30 loaves at a time. We'll take some of this prawn mixture and make sure you go all the way to the edges. Now, the beauty of making this at home is that you can go as thick as you like. So right up to the edges. And then the last thing we have to do is turn it upside down into raw sesame seeds, so these aren't toasted, and onto your plate. So I do one more, and I just pop that into my prawn, into my sesame seeds, sorry. Now they go face to face as well. So you can see how we've got prawn facing prawn, just because I'm putting it into the fridge. a bit of prawn leakage. 
And there we have it guys. Pre-made sesame seed prawn toast. You can make this in huge batches. Again, you can pop it into the fridge for up to three days or into the freezer for a good month or two, I'd say. I'll run a bit of clean film over the top, just to stop it from drying out. And I'm gonna pop this into the fridge just while I crack on with our last dish. And then we can fry them. They only take about five minutes to fry. Um, and we've got fantastic thick prawn toast. So now on to a dish which is recognized by everyone who's ever had a Chinese takeaway. These thinly wrapped cylindrical rolls are traditionally eaten during the Spring Festival at Chinese New Year. Before we even think about rolling, we have to cook our filling. Start off by heating your wok with two tablespoons of oil, then add finely sliced carrots, sliced spring onion and minced garlic. Cook for 30 seconds before adding the sliced water chestnuts and bamboo shoots and give everything a really good mix. Add the finely shredded Napa cabbage and stir again. And then a good handful of bean sprouts followed by a pinch of white pepper, salt and a dash of light soy sauce. Finish off with a squirt of sesame oil. It's important that you don't overcook the vegetables at this stage as you want them still to be crunchy. Transfer to a plate and allow to cool before filling your spring rolls. This is a perfect starter portion, but if you're cooking for the street, you can simply chop more veg. Now on to the fun part. Spring roll wrappers. Um, you're probably wondering why they're in a tea towel. So what it is, I've dampened this tea towel and it stops them from drying out. When you buy them, you'll get them in a block. They're so thick, I've used a few of these already. And um, you'll just need to be patient and just try and find the end of one, he says. Try and find the end of one. But there you go. And then just very carefully, just use your thumb and fingers and just peel them free. So there's one. And there's two. And once you get started, it's normally a good thing. You can just crack on with it. So I'll take three off for now. And you have to be careful because there is a tendency that they want to rip. Right, so there's three peeled. And just so these don't dry out, I'll just fold them over, pop them back under my wet tea towel, ready for when I want to use them. So that can go back over there. My filling, which I cooked earlier, has cooled. I'll just grab a spoon. Now, we want to try and create a cylindrical shape about a third of the way up. Now these, we're gonna make mini veggie mini spring rolls. So I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna be stingy with the filling, but then again, I don't want them to be too big either. And then I'm just gonna create like a, a sausage shape. Now I take the corner closest to me and I just fold it over the mixture. And then what I do, I, with confidence, you need to pull it towards you, which tightens the mixture. I then give it a couple more turns. Just place my finger just to steady it. I'm just gonna turn the ends over. Like so, just creating like an envelope shape. And then gonna turn again and again. Now, these are completely vegan. So you could use an egg wash if you're vegetarian, but if not, this is just plain flour and water, which is just like a, pastry glue or a flour glue that we've made. And I just put a little bit on the end and I roll the spring roll and there we have our first parcel. So I'll pop that onto my plate and we just have to repeat that process a few times. Again, you can make these or you can batch cook these and batch make them. They'll live in the um, fridge covered, which is really important, for about three, four days again. 
Um, or you can make a huge batch, pop them into one of your Ziploc bags and then freeze them for a good three months. They'll be absolutely fine. And then you can fry them from frozen as well. So I'll just make number two. And again, I'll take the end, I'll just turn it over and then pull the mixture tight as I can, pulling it towards me. I'll give it a couple more turns, pop my finger on top just to steady the package. Uh, same again on this side. And there's my envelope shape again. And I'll turn it, a little bit of my flour glue, as we're calling it now. And there's number two. And we'll make one more. Now, you can make these as large as you want or as small as you like as well, actually. And we'll take a good tablespoon of this mixture again. Now, if you do like the char siu or the shrimp chicken, by all means, you can put that in there. So you can obviously put any filling you like into this. So again, just over, put it nice and tight towards me, turn it a couple of times. Fold my envelope over. And use a blob of my glue. And there was three very simple, very easy to roll spring rolls. And I'm just going to go and make a couple more before we start frying. So I've spent today prepping these tasty morsels and now I'm going to cook them together for everyone to tuck in. And there we have it. Three Chinese takeaway starters, prepped in our own time, cooked in less than 10 minutes. Perfect for soirees, canapé evenings, or even the family buffet. You see, it really was all in the prep. <laughs>